Hi, I'm Zoe Hawkins and I'm here today with Dr John Coyne to discuss ASPE's new border security program and his new special report, Securing the Australian Frontier, an Agenda for Border Security Policy. John, thanks for being with us today. Um, border security is obviously a very important concept, but one that is often uh, with connotations of traditional territorial integrity um, and state-on-state -state conflict. Can you give us some insight into the more contemporary challenges that make this an important issue today? Yeah, sure, Zoe. Look, I mean, right from the start, um, sort of the old conceptions are still in place, which also makes it quite difficult. So, for instance, um, you know, one, border security is all about sovereign power. So it's about um, the exact spot where your sovereign power um, begins or ends, depending on your perspective. Um, so that remains true. The difficult thing now, though, is that um, the border itself is difficult to find so and define. So for starters, you know, you can use terms like to describe it now as rather than just being a geographical point or um, you know, a grid reference on a map, um, it's elastic, uh, it's a continuum, it's psychologically constructed, and it's all of those things and none of those things. Um, so that's what really makes it difficult for us. So for instance, take visa applications. Um, most people who come to Wolf who come to Australia lawfully will put in a, an application for a visa before they come. Now, the visa you would think, the process of where the border is, is, you know, at Sydney Airport, for instance. But it's not. It begins all the way back, perhaps in Beijing, where someone walks into an office or goes through um, a visa business or a broker who coordinates travel, who then fills out the forms. The board is also sitting inside the Australian Embassy there where um, process workers are going through and processing um, applications and so on and so forth all the way through to when someone's actually inside the country and we're managing them on, go on an ongoing basis. And indeed, um, we looked just recently with um, the terrible tragedy with um, Monis and the um, Lint Cafe mm -hmm. and now we're saying that we've actually got to manage the border for 20 years when someone's inside but not permanently inside the border. Um, so all those things go together to make it an incredibly complex um, issue. And for the general public, um, you know, when you look at it, you sort of sit there and think, when we talk border security, people are thinking just boats, you know, patrol boats up in the north of Australia. They're thinking um, guards and dogs walking around airports, etc. But it, it's just so much more complex now than ever before. Mm. And obviously all countries will be sort of grappling with this sort of contemporary idea of, of borders. Do you think that Australia faces particularly unique challenges um, given its geography and its isolation as a, an island continent? Um, look, it faces some unique challenges because of a range of factors. So for instance, at any given stage, I mean, we have a very small population, but we have a large population of um, temporary visitors here in Australia. Um, we find ourselves, um, it should be easier in order to maintain, um, I guess, sovereignty of an island because you know, you've got natural geographic boundaries. But now we have such a large volume of people crossing the borders that that's no longer true. Um, so look, we face some unique challenges to other countries. Um, it's not as easy as, for instance, in the US where you've got a, a distinct physical barrier that you have to guard. In our context, it's, you know, it's the, the borders in Thailand as, as our um, Australian Border Force people are standing there working with the local um, airlines um, going through and looking at passengers travelling to Australia. And as I said earlier, it's in the processing of visas all the way forward as well in places like Beijing and other places around the globe. Mm -hmm. And um, in your report, it mentions sort of the increased pressure today on sort of border security frameworks. Does that come purely from an increase in sort of the volume of transactions or is it also added complexity to the, to the um, process? Look, it's complexity and volume and interest. So in t first off, at a very, very strategic cultural level, um, in times of uncertainty, people want to feel secure. Um, border security is one of those things that, you know, um, it's a very visible context for people to look at and say, you know, is, is our nation secure? So we have this period of economic instability, instability. Um, we have, you know, the issues with terrorism and so people are very attuned um, at a cultural level and at a very high level about border security. So that puts some pressure on us right from the start. Um, secondly, we have the added pressure of, um, in the forward estimates period, we're seeing this massive increase in border transactions and those, you know, freight, I mean, it's close to 50% increase per annum on freight crossing Australia's borders. Um, 
and that's not going to go away. And then we have, at the same time, we have moderate increases in capability um, and expenditure and border security. So we have this sort of gap between the two. And then we're faced with that, that sort of problem is, well, that's not going to go away anytime soon. And we're still working with a very, um, you know, 100 year old system where we're looking at the border as a, as a transaction. And even the language I just used then, it's about a transaction. When in fact, what we're really now in the business of is risk and looking at, you know, how much risk we're willing to accept and how much risk um, the general Australian person is willing to accept. Mm. And I mean, in managing that risk, you mentioned before how the border sort of extends over to where the process begins um, pre-border in other countries. Does that mean there's sort of scope for international cooperation on this issue? I mean, that's where the, it's easier. And certainly um, if we're talking about the movement of people, um, it's easier to deny visas and work with foreign governments forward of the border. Um, a lot more difficult once they arrive. I mean. You've only got to have a look at, um, recently we had a case where a, um, a, a pro-life um, advocate, very outspoken from the US, had, had requested a visa um, and had managed to get um, himself onto a plane to Australia. Uh, he got all the way here and then he had to be detained at Melbourne International Airport. There was an extended period of time before he was sent back. Um, and of course, you know, there's fines and other arrangements in place, but that just indicates to us, you know, it, that's one case, how hard it is once they're here. So of course, when you're talking about a border continuum and that process I talked about earlier, what we want to do is, or what the Australian government needs to do and from a policy perspective, is put a series of almost like depth in our processes uh, for border security so that as far forward of the border, we're already going through and looking at risks. For the average traveller, and this is where it gets important, for the average traveller, what does that mean? And when I talk to, um, um, the bureaucracy here in Canberra, when I talk to senior bureaucrats and I say to them, well, what does the border look like from a, from a traveller's perspective, for instance, in five years? And they turn around and they say, well, John, um, you as a traveller would come into somewhere like Sydney or Melbourne Airport, you'd walk straight in and walk straight out after picking your luggage. Um, you wouldn't see an Australian Border Force person, you know, it'd all be very seamless and off you go. Only those small number of people where there's a higher risk would then be engaged by border force. Um, so the, this sort of principle of depth and continuum is as much about um, easing and ease of travel as it is about um, protective measures. That's very interesting. So, I mean, this is obviously a very complex landscape and you've mentioned the need for sort of very innovative policy to, to respond to it. How will the new, ASPE's new uh, border security program contribute to that discussion? Um, Look, it's one of the things, the great things about ASPE and ASPE's charter. Um, number one is about um, contributing to public policy dialogue. Mm -hmm. Now, um, whilst there has been research and dialogue around border management, when it comes to border security, um, there's been a distinct absence, and not just here in Australia, I mean globally, a distinct absence of, of good public policy dialogue on this. Um, a policy dialogue that takes us away from um, from uh, you know um, very basic arguments where you know do we secure our border or not secure our border, which I, I sort of si oversimplify what we're talking about here. So ASPE's plays and uh, has already done so over the last six months and will continue to play an important role in bringing up these issues in a public policy sense and and having people um, be able to discuss and debate those. Of course, you know at the heart of all our work here at ASPE is good quality applied policy research. Um, so it sets out, uh, the report itself sets out a very rigorous um, research program, folks at answering or at least identifying and talking about the major policy challenges faced in border security. So it's those two key processes that, or key approaches that we'll use to address the problem and contribute to the public policy debate here in Australia. Thanks, John. Well, that's obviously a very important program, one that will um, offer invaluable contribution to what is a serious and complex problem for Australia today. So, John, thank you for being here today. Thank you. And uh, we look forward to seeing the work from the program. Thank you very much.